oh hi! This week we're gonna make the dress I'm wearing. There will be better shots later in the video. In the meantime, you know how I said in my last video that I had a bunch of projects set aside that I wanted to do sooner than later? Well, would it surprise you that I impulse purchased a pattern from an independent company called Petite Stitchery? It's called the Nia Dress because I saw it in a Facebook group that I'm part of. And listen, it's the only thing I ever do on Facebook is hang out in these crafting groups. People make some real cool shit on there. But yeah, someone posted themselves in this dress and I immediately was like, I need to know how to make that. And thankfully the pattern on sale. This isn't sponsored or anything. I just got really excited and the pattern was $7.50. So obviously I had to print everything myself at home. They don't have like physical patterns you can buy. It's just the PDF slash projector file. I've seen a handful of people doing this where they have projectors mounted to their ceiling and then the pattern is like shining down onto your fabric and it's just the neatest. I almost don't trust myself to not budge things because I feel like I push things around too much to keep things in place. Or if there's a paper pattern on top, it's shifting with the thing. Anyway, there's some options on there and like big size printing files as well. I have yet to tackle that and I know there's multiple options for how to go about it. I need to just find like a small local printer shop, show up with my computer and ask them how to do it. So I had a particularly rough day at the end of last week. April 2022 just had to fuck with me for like the last leg of it. I don't think there's a single day in April that I felt okay, but now that we're into May, it's only the second and I have had particularly good days yesterday and today so far. So here's hoping. I got all of my bad out of the way last month. That's it for the year. No more available. I mentioned the rough day because the perfect thing for me to do once I stopped having to fight with my printer because that did cause a technology meltdown which happens every time something goes wrong with a computer or my phone or the printer. Why always printers? They're always such a headache. But I got it sorted. I printed all the pages and then just spent the whole day watching more Moulin Rouge bootlegs because I'm a monster. And there's a full production of Bandstand that's available and the Amelie play, which I love. It's one of my all time favorite movies. And I really like the changes they made and the updates to the story for the play. And the songs were great. I really enjoyed it. Anyway, I had a bit of a self care day while also doing kind of boring, tedious work which was taping all the pattern pieces together and then just cutting out all of the pieces. Also question for those of you that regularly print PDF patterns, what do you do with them? Do you put them in like its own folder? Do you put them in a binder? Do you hang them? Cause the one other PDF pattern that I have put together and have used that wrap skirt I made, I think last year, but that pattern company doesn't even exist anymore. And that was my very first PDF pattern and I hated it. I will say this company, Petite Stitchery, I fucking love how they do their registration marks, how the corners are set up. It made it much easier for me to like really figure out if I needed to like adjust a little bit here and there so that things were lined up correctly where when it's just one little triangle or like an arrow or something and you just have like one point in the middle of each page, it makes it really hard to keep it on track because I feel like once I get to the last couple pieces I'm taping on, something is not in the right position anymore or there's like a warp to one of the page overlaps and I just deal with it being there. So I was able to keep way more consistent with this. So yeah, even though it still involved cutting off two sides of each page so that you could overlap it and see where everything was, do y'all fold it or do you cut it down? I cut it all down because I feel like I'd get annoyed at not getting clean fold lines and I'm cringing at the thought of the noise. Oh, it hurts my teeth. <laughs> when you like run a ruler over it and get it nice and flat, I, mm, mm, mm. Cutting is how I'm gonna go from now on because clearly I have an aversion to doing the full day. <laughs> Ooh boy. So what I'm saying is it took a long time to get this pattern together just because it's a full length thing where I've done some shorts that I've recently printed out and taped together, but they were like 15 pieces and that went pretty quickly. I would like to do one of those slash both of the shorts patterns that I printed out because I haven't made shorts since I made like pajama bottoms for myself, basically boxers. And we're getting into warm seasons. Now that my legs are out, I do not want to put them back in any of my jeans and a lot of my clothes just aren't fitting at the moment. So making some new stuff that'll fit me for the time being would be great. Okay, and just because I hadn't even heard of this company before, and if you're interested in checking it out, my thoughts on their patterns thus far is I absolutely love the registration marks. They have the biggest size range I've seen. Side note here, because this did confuse me, and I don't know if it's just because I do fit into a lot more straight sized things in stores. So I'm usually like medium large somewhere in that territory. Although I can go from small to double XL depending on the brand because nothing actually makes sense. But they do have XL and then double XL and then one X, two X, three X, up to four, I think. And this confused me because I thought 
XL was 1X. At least that's how it works in like men's shirts for the uniform store that I work at. Just always thought they were the same. So if they're not, let me know your thoughts because I was confused, but also I'm very privileged in the sizes that I've been because that isn't something I've had to look into before. So I would like to know your thoughts. And also, do you prefer letter sizes or number sizes? I wish everything was just off measurements, but I've also learned that men's pants, even though they go by technically your waist measurement. They're still inches bigger. I learned that the hard way last year or the year before and am forever annoyed about it because I thought something was consistent in the world. I feel deceived every time. Okay, and then the other thing, you know, this pattern was not super expensive and there's a lot of different options. There's a different hemline you can do for the bottom, a bunch of different lengths. There's an entire different way to tackle the top. So I did the cap sleeves, but they also have like a spaghetti strap thing that looks super comfortable for super hot days. So I may try that as well. The one one thing that I got thrown off by is there's a couple sets of marks that show cut here for cap sleeve option, but cut here for spaghetti strap option. And it was dashed lines on one, but then solid lines on the other. And cause I cut on the solid lines on the first one, I just assumed that it was solid lines across all of the pieces cause most of them were, but there was one that was dashed lines. I initially was gonna blame that for me having to dig around in the recycling and find the pieces that I had cut off here to find the dashed and solid lines that I didn't think I needed. But also I don't wanna have to reprint this whole thing to do the other option. So I wanna keep it in tact anyway. So I probably would have had to do this part regardless of their indications on the pattern. But that's like the tiniest, most insignificant nitpicky thing I could be commenting on. I am so very on board with everything about this pattern and it's just, I wasn't paying attention. And honestly, it probably just makes more sense to have the dash lines where they are just cause of how the pattern's laid out. I'm sure they're not doing it just to confuse people. Anyways, that's like, my review of their pattern in general, and this is the only one I've tried. I do like some of their other designs though and may try out some other ones. If you have tried any of their patterns, let me know. And if there are other independent pattern companies that you super love, let me know, cause I would like to check them out. I know I still have plenty of my own patterns that I haven't used and need to tackle and like work through and decide if I'm gonna keep or donate or gift to someone instead of just continuing to hoard things much like I do with my fabric. Ooh, and speaking of, this came in very handy. My little set of fabric swatches that I made last week. I still haven't tackled the fleece or the flannel. Please don't let me get away with not doing those before the end of spring, I think. I really need to do it and just have it done. This was helpful to try to figure out like what amount of stretch we had going here because it did need a four-way stretch knit for this project. And also just a lot of yardage because I wanted to try the longest length first. So the fact that this had three yards to it and I didn't have to double check it by digging it out or anything, I knew for sure this was gonna be enough for what I needed. And actually, while I have this out, I'm gonna update because I did measure the rest of the fabric that was left over before I packed it away. So I'm gonna cross out the three yards and just below that right down one yard plus some scraps because I used a little under two yards for this. Cool, now I have that updated and it can go back in my little swatch envelope. And actually I say I used a little under two yards but I ended up way shortening the dress so would have needed even less to make this. This was also 60 inch wide fabric so I was able to get more width wise than some of the other knits that I have so that also decreased the yardage I needed. Cutting out the fabric, there weren't a ton of notches or anything I had to use. Also I learned that the notcher doesn't work super great on heavy, loosely woven knits like this, but it still worked well enough that I could see where the indents were. So I can't say that it didn't work. It just wasn't as clean of a snip as it does in the wovens that I used. But that is the nature of knits. So it's not the notcher's problem. And also, especially with knits that want to move around everywhere, I really prefer using a rotary cutter for this kind of thing instead of scissors because I just find things shift less and it's just more accurate to the actual pattern piece. And here's the thing about this fabric is it does kind of hurt my eyes to look at when there's a huge swatch of it like this. So my theory was that wearing it would maybe make me imperceivable, like a chameleon, which sometimes I just don't wanna be witnessed by other people when I'm out in the world. I just wanna like do whatever shit I have to do and then go back home and hide in my hermit hole. Is that a relatable thing or just a me thing? I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, so as I said, I went with the longest possible option on here because nothing's ever actually long on me. So I suspected that it wouldn't be the case for this either, but you know what? It ended up being not too long. I just don't like the style cut it would have been if I had left it long. That makes sense. So some pivots happened down the road, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Once I cut everything out, I got back over to my sewing station and then as I was putting stuff together, because you assemble 
the two back pieces because there's some curves going on to it because it, it hugs you real tight in like a nice way. Putting those pieces right sides together and just any of the other construction steps. I do not like using pins for this kind of thing. I find clips are a way easier option. They kind of grip stuff better. They don't move around and like pins just fall out of stuff like this, especially this thicker, looser knit. I would have been stepping on pins for weeks if I had used those in this project. <laughs> also, this was actually a really great project to use this kind of fabric for because the reason I didn't know what to do with it previously Obviously is it has so much weight to it and like droops almost like it's so drapey but the way it hangs on here is exactly right. It was actually a really difficult knit to work with even when I was super careful about not stretching anything out it still kind of like warped the seams and I was able to fix some of it later and I'll show you the little trick I do for that to kind of like regain the elasticity but there were some spots where the damage was done and that like recall was not going to come back so I will definitely be looking to do this again in a different kind of knit. Would not recommend this material if you're new to sewing with stretchy fabrics. Although as far as this being like a beginner friendly project I, I think it would go okay. I don't think it would be too difficult to follow. I think maybe. I honestly haven't even done that many knit patterns before but this seemed to go together pretty well and I laugh because my god how things crashed and burned later on but it's entirely my fault and not the pattern's fault. Anyway I did make sure I was using a zigzag stitch on my machine and I used a walking foot because the thing I learned early on with sewing most knits and then any kind of like thin finicky fabric is walking foot is just going to help everything be less of a nightmare and it never gets sucked into the bottom of the machine, gets stuck under the presser foot way less often and also generally it helps knits go through evenly but I yeah still had a hard time with it not turning into like a lettuce edge almost. The one extra step I added, can you believe I added a step to the process, is you know zigzag the seams right sides together then I would serge them to finish them but then because serging especially would warp it, any of the seams that were going vertically, so up and down. I did turn the seam allowance to one side, generally towards the back, but the back seam, I just picked a direction for it to go and then top stitched it down to one side, especially for the back center. I just didn't want it like wobbling behind me because you know when you're wearing a pair of jeans and that side seam is like not going the same direction the whole time. Sometimes it's actually stitched in opposite directions from the top to the bottom, like the cuff at the ankle is stitched a different direction than up by the waistband drives me bonkers. I feel like y'all are learning more and more of my neuroses with each video. <laughs> so yeah, especially because the up and down seams aren't going to need as much stretch. That's one way to pronounce that word. Aren't going to need as much stretch as any seams going across because in general that's where you want the stretch and movement to be. I figured reinforcing those seams with like a long, you know, top stitching zigzag stitch, so just I set it to the longest length I could, would still give it some movement but just kind of reinforce it and help it not start weighing down because again this is a really heavy knit and I didn't want the whole dress to start like sagging downwards the more I wore it. Then there were a couple prep steps because this is a wrap dress so there's two front pieces that cross over each other. One of them is like the more front one. It did get some gathering at the side for this part right here and I don't think I've ever gathered a knit so it threw me off to start with. Cap sleeves also got some gathering. I love how it ended up looking. I think that's what makes this so flattering is it almost gives like a ruching effect across like tummy and stuff so it doesn't quite feel like a bodycon dress because I think otherwise I would be too uncomfortable wearing it. Okay and then the other prep step was to hem the swoop and that was just surging the edge and then turning it under. Again surging stuff is where the most most waviness happened but we're gonna work some magic at the end. Then it was the main assembly steps. Attach the sleeves together. Again there's some gathering at the front cap sleeve seam. It almost goes together like a raglan sleeve shirt but obviously you know there's not much to the sleeve. I actually like this style more than I thought. I used to be super self-conscious about like this whole part of my body like shoulders, across my chest like this like where my clavicle is but getting this tattoo was like the most game-changing thing I did because I like that it's kind of peeking out a little bit and it just made me give much less of a shit about this part of me as far as like oh my, I, I'm too broad I have the shoulders of a linebacker like who gives a shit now it's pretty and I like it and I just don't think about it in a negative way I am neutral slash positive about this part of me now. I very much like where this hits right here because it covers up this little armpit meat that I sometimes get in my head about and I know that's plenty of my own stuff to unpack but yeah it kind of fully displays this tattoo and I feel like I don't have that happen enough. Anyways yeah at least this version of the dress it went together so quickly because I was shocked when it was like 
oh, it's time to do the side seams. Had I not been a meathead, this would have just taken a couple hours. I honestly think assembling and then cutting out the pattern is what took the longest because this was coming together so nicely and so quickly. And I forget that about a lot of knit projects. There's just less stuff you have to do. I don't know. And then also I didn't even bother making a mock-up for this because I knew there would be enough wiggle room with pretty much every part of it that it wouldn't be an issue to kind of fuck around with it after it was assembled. Okay, and then this is where things get hairy and I should have just walked away from the project. This was still at the end of April. We hadn't gotten into the goodness of May yet. So I was still in a bit of a hole when I was working on this and I think I got too tired. I just kept fucking the same thing up and I should have stopped the second time I fucked it up and then I just persevered onto the third and then I did a bunch of math. The math did check out. Thankfully, I didn't ruin anything further and have to recut anything. As far as like brand new pieces, I had to cut stuff down, but I should have waited for the next morning to do any of that. I sewed the side seams together in a very dumb way and not in the right order and I just didn't pay attention or think of the fact that like, right, you need to sandwich both front layers in these seams so there should be three layers for at least part of the side seams. So I had to unpick that to start with. Then I sandwiched stuff together and then try to fit once I had things on. And I had this ruching gathered section up right by my armpit. So the way it was crossing over was not how it was supposed to be. It absolutely was user error. This is not the pattern's fault. It clearly indicates everything on the pattern. And also because I got ahead of myself and was like, we're already at the side seam step. I know how to do side seams, easy. It'll be like side seams and then just hemming stuff and then we're done. This is gonna go so fast. That's the mode I went into where prior to that thought, I had followed every step on the actual instructions that came with the pattern and like looked at the little visuals that they had because there's photos for every step and nice explanations. And yeah, I went rogue at a time that I really shouldn't have where normally I'm pretty confident in my ability to handle those parts of a project, but just completely went off the rails. One good thing from this test fit at least is I figured this is way longer than I want to wear it. When I took everything over to the cutting table, I just laid the pattern pieces on top. Everything was unpicked except for the shoulders. So it made it much easier to like adjust the pattern pieces and transfer those markings onto the pieces and cut everything down as needed. So this is where I found those scrap pieces in the recycling bin and like tediously taped them together and had to do that in a couple different ways. And honestly, I'm really excited to try a spaghetti strap version. I think it's gonna take a little longer, although maybe not because you're basically binding stuff versus having everything down so maybe it's a similar amount of time because you're also not gathering cap sleeves or doing these seams it feels like more work but it's probably actually not more work I won't know till I try anyways at first I thought I would move this up to just the knee length full swoop I think it's called like the tulip shape it's being of tulip sleeves have you all seen season two of Bridgerton it's so funny thinking about having watched the first season because everyone was talking about how like rabidly sexual the show was and I had only seen the first couple episodes and was like fuck are you talking about? But then you get however far in and it's like, oh, okay, we have turned a corner here. So I think I was more prepared for it in the second season. And it's not anything like grotesque or over the top, I don't think. But my goodness, I don't love the character of Antony, but I do super love the actor. I wanna hang out with that dude so bad. He just seems like a goddamn delight. Probably very fun to get a beer with. I feel like that's how I gauge how much I like certain celebrities. Just in that kind of setting, do I think it would be enjoyable to just shoot the shit with them? Maybe play some cribbage, cause I am 87 at heart. I can't wait to be an old lady just playing cribbage and drinking Manhattans and living my best front porch rocking chair life with just herds of rescue dogs all over the place. Ah, <sighs> okay, anyways, how did I get here? Right, tulip shape, tulip shape curve. There's also this more triangular shape. So I did, you know, a bit of a test run and cut the pattern down and thought like, that's not a ton getting cut off the bottom of this. In actuality, I think the ideal length for me would be between the mini and knee length, you know, still above the knee, but not like quite as high up on my thigh. Cause it looks fine from the front, but I know when I sit in something like this, as soon as I stand up, it's a little bit too high back here. So I think if it was a little bit longer, that'd be good. And I think that would also be a really easy alteration to make to the pattern. Seeing the height difference between the knee length and the midi length, I decided to try the triangle cut cause it's both higher, but has this drop down bit. So it's a little bit more modest. Although listen, the top of the dress is much more open, I'll say, than most things that I wear. So it's already kind of out of my comfort zone. So why not just lean into it? Cause I like the look of the dress more 
with this being a little bit shorter. But again, I'll probably add like a little bit of length to the bottom next time I tackle this. And listen, I'm an action adventure lady. I don't like having to worry about things riding up or someone like seeing my unmentionables. So I always, always, always have shorts on underneath my dresses and skirts anyway. And then there's less of my leg to get stuck to a chair like the one I'm currently sitting on. Because as we're getting into warmer weather, that's just my entire life is getting stuck to leather seats. <laughs> have I mentioned how much I hate how hot and humid and like buttery it feels here in the warmer months. You would think New England, which is known for being like an icy tundra for parts of the year, wouldn't have that extreme of a summer, but we do fully experience all four seasons and that is my least favorite part is like most of the summer. Okay, while I'm cutting this stuff out again, when y'all are cutting out a pattern, do you cut on the inside of the line or the outside of the line or like right on the line? I know, especially for a knit like this, it does not matter, but there are certainly some fitted pieces where that could become a factor, especially if there's a lot of pieces going together. I just don't know if there's like a standard protocol. I've never seen it written down anywhere. It's not one of the like instructions on any of the patterns I've read is like where to cut. This is the stuff I get in my head about and get really frustrated and like I need specifics. Although I guess if the instructions are too dense then I get overwhelmed and I'm like I can't even absorb what these words mean. It's just something I was thinking about with this project is where where you cut on the thing. I generally go with the outside edge because then I can fully see all the markings because sometimes when you're using a pattern you like hit the very edge of it and you kind of like shave a little bit off each time you use it especially with a rotary cutter so if that happens a lot of times like I've had to recut some of my Tilly and the Buttons patterns just because I've used them so many times and the initial ones were out of tissue paper which like do not hold up well. I can at least tell that there's some starting to disappear because that border is going away. All right, once that front piece was cut with the new hemline with that little triangle taper, I also matched that same length on the back pattern piece as well as the other front piece. And this is where it just helped having the side seams separated because all of these were their separate panels. Then we got to earlier today because I filmed that other stuff a couple days ago as things slowly fell apart <laughs> and then I finally walked away from it. There was one pattern piece that I needed to add to the mix here which was basically a binding for that short straight edge of this triangle bottom and then I just had to rehem the rest of the swoop. I actually don't like the binding situation here. I think it was kind of difficult which I think is the part that makes me the most hesitant about the spaghetti strap version is I think there's gonna be a lot of binding happening but also, maybe I just need to practice and that's why I'm frustrated with it. This was also not the best fabric to work with, but it's the fabric you don't love that you want to use for the first time. So it's, it's fine. Everything's fine. I'm doing great. <laughs> Once I had fixed that new curvy front flap, I took my time laying out the back piece right side up. Then I slowly, carefully, you know, double checking the pattern piece to make sure that I had the notch in the same spot still. Like took my time to line everything up and made sure everything made sense now that I had tried it on and like saw where things should be going because I was desperate to not fuck this up again. And yeah, I just clipped the hell out of everything and just really took my time to make sure this was actually correct this time. Why don't you know it? I did it right. It actually went great. And this is why I think the project, if done when you're in a clear enough headspace, wouldn't actually take all that long to get done. Like had I mushed this morning session with Saturday morning session, it probably would have been like three-ish hours between cutting the fabric out and assembling the dress, especially if you're not making the tweaks that I ended up making. Okay, on the home stretch, once I stitched with the zigzag and the walking foot, then surged and then did that kind of top stitching, pushing the seams towards the back and just putting them in place there. I did play a little game of thread chicken with my bobbin because I had, you know, this much, maybe this much of my side seam left to do. And it looked like my bobbin was just barely on its last legs. And I had the tiniest, tiniest length left after I finished back stitching everything. And here's when the one meat head thing happened for this morning's sewing session is I even, filmed a TikTok playing Thread Chicken because it's the closest to an extreme sport as I ever get. And then you know what I didn't do before I started sewing the next thing is wind that bobbin. So I started stitching without any thread on the bottom side. So it wasn't actually stitching. And then because there's a back seam and then the two side seams, when I loaded the bobbin and then started stitching again, I was like, huh, this one's laying really flat because the thread hides so well on this dress, it's wild. And thank goodness with all the corrections and like overhauls I ended up having to do. But I ended up basically restitching the back seam because I wasn't paying enough attention when I started in on the seam in the first place. So that was a little bit annoying, but also just me not double checking things before I started sewing. So eventually I got everything stitched down the way I wanted it. And then 
it was just a matter of serging and hemming the armholes and then the bottom of the skirt dress. Oh, and here's the part where I tried to correct some of the waviness that was happening from serging and stitching this. Again, I tried my damnedest to not pull on anything and like not have it warp, but it was fighting a losing battle. And you can clearly see in the photos and like videos I was taking that things do look like they're pulled out of shape. And I don't love that. It's something I definitely notice. Maybe other people that don't sew wouldn't notice, but I'm sure some of y'all are like, yeah, that looks like it's pulled out of place. But anyway, I hit every seam with a ton of steam from my iron. There were a couple spots I did end up actually pressing just to try really hard, like where the binding part was. It was so difficult to not be pulling on anything. I don't know. If y'all have a better technique for how to do this, let me know, because I don't love how this came out and I'm not sure how else to go about it. Because again, I already have the walking foot and was using an awl to kind of poke stuff through and I, yeah, was trying my best to not be pulling stuff and because the dress is so heavy and maybe that's the crux of the issue. I made sure to have it like as close to the machine as possible. It wasn't like in my lap pulling down, wasn't letting gravity do its thing and still had this issue. But yeah, when I'm steaming something like this, I just hold the iron just above the thing that I'm trying to hit with the steam. And I had on the highest heat setting, which I knew this fabric could handle because I did do a little test run of ironing it just to make sure things weren't gonna melt. Your girl's learning. Oh, which reminds me of the other project I need to work on this week involves having to hide some iron burns. I'm glad I remembered that because that is a time sensitive thing. I need to have that done by Saturday. So good, good thinking brain. Anyways, yeah, have the iron hovering like just above the thing. I guess if you're nervous about what the steam might do, you can like start a little further away and then get a little bit closer. And I know not every iron does a steam feature, but that is one of the glories of this one is it can, it can get a lot of steam going. And there's an option. You can have no steam, small amounts of steam, or like, fuck yeah, all the steam forever. And that definitely helped. There was still just the binding edge that is the most warped, but everything else kind of worked its way back for the most part. It's certainly not as bad as it was when I first stitched all this together. So it very much helped. It's just not as perfect as I would like it, but we're here for practice makes progress, not perfect. Perfection is a myth. Fuck perfection. Then it was done and I did a bit of frolicking outside before the rain moved in because, you know, it is springtime here. And apparently it rains more days a year in the Northeast than it does in the Pacific Northwest, where I think of the Pacific Northwest as the rainy part of the country. So that actually just makes me want to move to that part instead of being here. <laughs> and yeah, the only thing that's really bothering me is the kind of wrinkles on the seams. Now that the gathering part has been moved to the correct height, I really love how it swoops across. I actually think I may add even more gathering along the bottom side of this little swoosh because I like how it looks across and I just want more swooshing and ruching. And I have this fun little flap that I can throw around. And yeah, it's comfy as all hell, I have to tell you. And the armholes, like a great size for me. I find a lot of patterns, the arm side ends up like cutting into my arm meat, like especially back here, this gets so uncomfortable and like I don't have full range of motion, but this is totally fine. I wasn't sure with the hemming, how that was gonna be, because yes, they're stretch stitches, but there's still a limit to how far they can move. It's possible I would add like a little bit of height here, or maybe rather than hem it down, like add the binding. Again, a reason, to, a reason to try the strapless version. I feel like every point that's come up has been an argument for making that. So I, I think it's gonna happen. I'm gonna do it either way, but let me know if you would like to see the process because this was a lot of fun and it certainly satiated my brain because as soon as I saw the pattern, I was like, I have to make it. And it's definitely one of those projects that if I didn't make it this weekend, like I saw it Friday, started it on Saturday, was out all day yesterday and then finished it this morning, Monday. I still had the like motivation and the novelty of it hadn't worn off yet. When that idea first happens is kind of the best time for me to do it. But that is the problem with having too many goddamn ideas is there's just not enough time in the day. I'm glad I have a surplus of ideas rather than having none at all coming up, you know? <sighs> okay, I think that's gonna do it for me. As you can hear, my throat is starting to feel a little weird because I am still not fully recovered. It's getting there, it's better every day. I still can't eat so many things and that's a little frustrating. And the reason for doing all of this shit with my tonsils is I haven't been experiencing the pain that I used to have before I had the tonsillectomy, which was the reason I got them out in the first place. So I hadn't spent much time thinking about that or like being grateful for that until someone asked like, okay, but are you having the issues that you had before you had the tonsillectomy? I was like, 
no, you're right. I don't have that low level everyday pain from that. It's just my throat is finishing healing. It's a weird spot. I guess I just take a long time to heal and it is healing fine. There were so many other issues that could have happened with this and those didn't. I got through anesthesia fine. Like there's so many things to be grateful for. So I will try to keep that in perspective and just be thankful and not just keep complaining about it and being frustrated because it is easy to slip into that and just be negative about things. I feel like that is part of why April was so difficult for me as I was just in a negative headspace for most of it. I feel like it was justified, but still things are looking up, damn it. We're going to make them. And speaking of things to be grateful for, the thing that I am most thankful for is all of the support that I get over on Patreon. I'm actually about to go work on mailing out the Patreon gifts for this month because there are two tiers that I send out physical perks for. And some point this month, we're going to get back into live streams. I literally haven't been able to talk. I think I'm at a place that I could handle doing something because filming videos, I do have to take breaks once in a while because I, kn I know I talk a lot and I could just shorten them down and accommodate for myself. Here we are. I don't even want to tell you how long I've been filming, <laughs> but I do take breaks and kind of like rest my voice a little bit, which would be harder to do on a live stream. So I've been like gun shy about it. But yeah, if there's a certain day of the week, it's probably gonna have to be like a weeknight earlier in the week or like a Saturday morning. I'm on Eastern Standard Time. So let me know if there's like better windows for y'all and we'll make it happen. It'll be great. I miss hanging out with everybody. Whether you're a patron or not, I very much appreciate your company and I will see you back here with another video next Friday. Thank you so much for hanging out. All right, so you know how I've been harping on the fact that I'm sad I don't get to go see Moulin Rouge in New York before three particular members of the original Broadway cast leave, which is like the weekend this video is coming out. Oh, I so wish I could go and I am very envious of everybody that does get to go, but the Moulin Rouge musical is also touring. Like they previewed in Boston and I couldn't go at the time and I regret it so deeply, but I was looking at the locations they're gonna to be touring and they're going to one of my best friend's towns. And we were looking at how much tickets were yesterday cause I'm planning to go visit her, take a little road trip with the Bean Boy. And the tickets weren't on sale yet. The show dates were not that far away and we were getting very confused. Well, I realized this morning it's cause the dates are for 2023 and not 2022, but time is so fucking meaningless right now that it didn't even occur to me that it would be the wrong year. So that's where my brain's at. Everything's fine. I'm just gonna go blissfully unaware through life. I hope all your brains are a little bit clearer than mine these days. <laughs>